I got divorced six months after getting married. The reason was my mother-in-law and my husband, Bob. They called me a member of the family, yet on the other hand, they completely alienated and pushed me away with the phrase, a total stranger. I'm Emily and I married Bob, who was the same age as me, a year ago when we were 29. We lived in a house about a 10-minute walk from my in-law's place. Bob had always lived with his parents, but when we started talking about marriage, we decided to rent an apartment halfway between our workplaces. However, my mother-in-law took it upon herself to find a vacant house near her home and sign the lease. It was nearly a two-hour trip to my workplace, so I was quite resistant, but Bob accepted his mother's offer, saying, Mom's paying the rent, plus it's a fairly new two-story house with a garden. Isn't that great? My mother-in-law, apparently the daughter of a wealthy family, had a husband who was married into her family. Before getting married, I met them a few times, but the father-in-law always seemed diminished, barely noticeable, a classic case of a henpecked husband. My mother-in-law took a liking to me, but not for my personality. She liked that I had no home to return to. My brother had married and taken over our family home, living with his three kids and our parents. So there was no place for me to return to. She thought I would devote myself as a member of her family. I thought it was an outdated way of thinking, but I was happy to be told, Emily, you'll fit right in as a member of our family and didn't mind it much. But I did find it a bit strange how much they rushed the marriage. Need to get Bob married off quickly or it'll be troublesome, his mother said insinuatingly. Right after the honeymoon, I realized that being a member of the family meant conforming to my mother-in-law's ideas. Our rented house, remodeled to her liking, didn't suit me at all. Colorful, flashy curtains, Rococo-style furniture with claw feet, and a Persian rug with a heavy pattern. All luxurious but cluttered and lacking harmony. When my mother-in-law said with a smile, I got these from our family's furniture store to celebrate you joining our family. Isn't it wonderful? I was dumbfounded, but I endured it because Bob was happy. But at that moment, I had a bad feeling. That feeling proved right as soon as we started our married life. My mother-in-law began summoning me daily. She had me cook and criticized everything. Sloppy use of knives, wrong heat control, poor choice of dishes, too much oil, too salty. She made me never want to cook again. You might have learned differently in your rural hometown, but now that you're part of our family, you need to learn our ways, she said coldly. Heartbroken, I returned home crying, only to have Bob say, it's tough at first, but keep at it. Mom's being strict because she sees you as family. Think of it as tough love. So I tried to rally and persevere, but being constantly criticized, I started losing confidence. It didn't help that they also disparaged my family. Even Bob started mocking me as a country girl, saying, guess you can't teach someone with a different upbringing. Just two months into our marriage, he began coming home late, leaving me alone. I started to wonder if this marriage was a mistake. During this time, my mother-in-law collapsed with a heart condition and had to be hospitalized. The cause was hypertension. According to the doctor, her blood was thick from too much salt and lack of exercise. Having never been in the position of a sick family member, I was at a loss for what to do. When I visited her, she yelled, what a useless daughter-in-law. You're young and part of the family. So you should be taking care of me. Even my husband who came with me shrugged it off, saying taking care of parents is the wife's job as a family member. I have work, so I'm leaving the post-discharge care to you. It's so unfair how they ridiculed me all this time, yet only wielded the family member card when it suits them. Plus, as a full-time employee, did this mean I had to take over the household chores at my in-laws after she got discharged? When I brought this up to Bob, he said, then quit your job as a family member. You should prioritize family over work. I was fed up. Then, unusually, my father-in-law spoke up. It's not right to put it all on Emily. She's part of our family, so let's share the care between me, Bob, and Emily. But my mother-in-law quickly retorted sharply, 
husband who's been adopted into our family has no right to give me advice. And to suggest that Bob should help, that's outrageous. I can't burden my precious son with such troubles. Faced with these cold words, my father-in-law glared at my mother-in-law for a moment, unable to contain his anger, and then left the hospital room. I was surprised to see my father-in-law so angry. At the same time, I was moved to tears that he, despite his weaker position, had stood up for me. In the car on the way back, I said to Bob about what your father said earlier and tried to start a conversation about the future care of his mother. But Bob dismissed it, saying, Mom doesn't like it, so forget it. You know she doesn't trust Dad at all. According to Bob, his mother, who was the sole heiress of a wealthy family, had an arranged marriage with his father. It seems she was forced into the marriage by her father, who favored his son-in-law, and from the beginning, she looked down on her husband. She never considered him as family, but rather treated him like a butler or a servant. That's so sad for your father. I couldn't help but blur out, to which Bob replied, Mom only considers me as family. Dad is a stranger to her. But he's still your father by blood, isn't he? Well, yes. But since Mom is the head of the family and considers Dad a stranger, that's what he is to me, too. That's terrible. Why? Our family has a long lineage, and Dad being an outsider doesn't change his lineage. To Mom, only blood relations are trustworthy. In the end, shocked, I asked for confirmation, so I'm a complete stranger to both you and your mother since there's no blood, right? Well, yeah, that's about it. So much for being a part of the family. I was so angry that I decided to cut ties with such a family. After my mother-in-law was discharged, she became even more domineering. Since the original cause was hypertension, her diet needed to be the first thing to change. But since she had always ridiculed my cooking as too rural, I had no intention of cooking for her anymore. What about mine and Bob's meals? Meals cooked by a country girl like me are not suitable for someone suffering from illness. What's with that attitude? How dare you speak to me like that, a mere daughter-in-law? Oh, so I can do it? I like strong flavors, so I'll be generous with salt, pepper, and sauces. Even if you're my daughter-in-law, how can you treat your mother like this? Well, if we're not related by blood, that means we're strangers, right? Why should I bother being considerate to such a person? As I coolly responded, my mother-in-law was speechless. She immediately called Bob, who was at work, and started complaining loudly. I thought to myself, let her bark. But to my surprise, Bob left work early and came home. What could you say to mom? How could you as a wife? I was appalled at his mama's boy attitude. Wife? What's that? A wife is a wife. I became your wife, but I never intended to be a daughter-in-law of this house. What kind of nonsense is that? Not even making meals for mom. I won't cook for you anymore either. You probably didn't notice this morning since you never eat breakfast. Why not? Why should I? Why would a stranger like me make meals for free? Who's a stranger? You're my wife. Have you forgotten already? I confirmed it before, since I have no blood relation to you or your mother, I'm a complete stranger. With that, Bob was at a loss for words. I left Bob and my mother-in-law and went straight back to the rented house. And so I began packing my belongings to send them to my parents' house for the time being. I had already explained the situation to my parents, my brother, and his wife and they agreed to temporarily store my belongings while I was planning to stay in a hotel for a while and rent an apartment as soon as possible. I was surprised when my father-in-law showed up. He then told me something shocking. Hey, I thought you just left suddenly, but then you sent a divorce paper. What's going on? A few days later, I received a call from Bob. What? You want a wife who won't cook for you, won't do your laundry, won't take care of you at all? A complete stranger. Are you still saying that? Let me make it clear, even if we don't divorce, I will never take care of you again. Are you okay with that? With that, Bob fell silent. Why not just have another woman come? You had a favorite girl at a nightclub even before we got married, right? As I casually mentioned this, Bob's voice rose. 
What are you talking about? Your father told me you were quite smitten with her, even bringing her to your parents' house. Your mother said she was after the family's wealth and kicked her out, right? No wonder your mother was so eager to rush our marriage. But Bob, you're still secretly seeing her, aren't you? Why not marry her? No way, that's out of the question. Mom wouldn't allow it. Well, maybe, but having affairs and cheating are enough reasons for divorce, so you'll have to pay alimony. I've got photographic evidence from a private detective. No way. Goodbye then, and please take care of the divorce papers. I said this and hung up the phone. Serves them right. Since then, things have apparently been tough at my in-law's house. When my father-in-law came, he told me he was divorcing my mother-in-law and had put their house up for sale. Though he was an adopted son-in-law, he was trusted by my mother-in-law's father, and the house built by her father was in my father-in-law's name. Moreover, my mother-in-law's father is now in debt due to failed investments and refuses to take her back. Furthermore, I heard that my mother-in-law squandered her money, and the divorce settlement was meager. Now, Bob and his mother live in an old apartment, barely making ends meet. As for me, I didn't quit my job after marriage, so I'm still working hard at the same company. Since I divorced after just six months of marriage, I refunded the entire amount of the wedding gifts to those who had given them. Everyone hesitated to accept it at first, but when I said, don't worry, I got a good sum from my ex-husband, they laughed and accepted. This way, I can work at this company without any lingering issues. 